This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's global, a perilous situation. The World Health Organization sounds the alarm over the latest variant of COVID-19. It's calling for vaccinations to be speeded up around the world to counter the Omicron variant. And it's predicting a new surge in infections will have severe consequences in some places. Omicron's very emergence is another reminder that although many of us might think we're done with COVID-19, it's not done with us. We'll get the latest on the spread of the new variant, what we know and what various governments are now doing. Also on the programme, within the last few minutes, Twitter confirms that its founder, Jack Dorsey, has stepped down as CEO with immediate effect. Ghislaine Maxwell is accused of trafficking underage girls for her former lover, Jeffrey Epstein, who died in prison two years ago. I'm Michelle Fleury in New York, where a jury is about to hear opening arguments in what some commentators are calling the trial of the century. And we'll get reaction after Manchester United appoint Ralph Rangnick as their interim manager. Can he turn around United's faltering season? And welcome to today's global. The new Omicron variant of coronavirus is highly transmissible and requires urgent action. That's the warning from the G7 health ministers who held an emergency meeting today to discuss the new strain of the virus. Several countries have now reported cases of the variant, but it's not yet been established how dangerous it is or how effectively the current vaccines will protect against it. Okay. Well, later in today's global, I'll be speaking with one of the leading South African researchers who's uh, trying to assess how transmissible the new variant actually is and if the current vaccines will work. So that is later in our programme. Now to breaking news because shares in the social media giant Twitter have been suspended from trading in New York. It comes after confirmation that its founder Jack Dorsey is stepping down as chief executive of uh, Twitter. Thanks very much uh, for joining us, Mark Chislak, uh, our technology correspondent. Mark, uh, so was this expected? Mark Chislak, thanks very much uh, for the latest and we'll have more in our business section a little later on that uh, breaking news. Now, Ghislaine Maxwell, a close associate of the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, is uh, on trial in New York. The British publishing heiress has been accused of trafficking four unnamed minors and grooming and recruiting them for her former lover to abuse in the late 90s and early 2000s. She's been in New York jail since her arrest back in July 2020 and has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. The BBC's Neda Torfik has more. Now, still to come on today's programme, can this man save Manchester United? We'll find out more about their new interim manager, Ralph Rangnick, who's been appointed till the end of the season. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Now talks on how to revive the Iran nuclear deal have resumed in Vienna for the first time in five months. The new Iranian government has said its goal in this round of talks is to secure the lifting of damaging economic sanctions. Well, BBC Persian special correspondent Kasra Naji is in Vienna for us. Uh, Kasra, just take us through the positions of the two sides going into this new round of talks. Now let's take a look at a couple of other stories making the headlines here today because protesters, uh, farmers who've camped out in Delhi's uh, border for over a year have been celebrating as the Indian parliament passed a bill to repeal three contentious farm laws. The reforms were went to boost the agricultural sector but small farmers say the changes made them vulnerable to competition from big business. The former Paralympic athlete Oscar Pistorius has been moved to a different prison to meet the family of Riva Steenkamp, the woman he murdered in 2013. South Africa's prison services said this was part of a rehabilitation process that could lead to parole, but gave no indication how long it would last. 
Now, let's turn to another of our headline stories because uh, Manchester United have appointed Ralph Rangnick as their interim manager till the end of the season. He's regarded as one of the best coaches in world football, a big thinker, a disciplinarian, a man who has a clear vision in terms of a style of play and someone with a record for building teams from the bottom up. I still think it's a fluid situation. I think it, it could change. He'll have a chance to impress. Yes. If he does that in the short term, Andy, it, I think it could stay longer. I'm going to have to cut across you because we're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us here on the programme and back with more headlines in just a moment or two. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelliwala. On today's global, a perilous situation. The World Health Organisation sounds the alarm over the latest variant of COVID-19. It's calling for vaccinations to be speeded up around the world to counter the Omicron variant. And it's predicting a new surge in infections will have severe consequences in some places. Flights from South Africa have been banned by the UK, the EU and the US. South Africa's health minister says there's no need to panic. We'll get the latest live from South Africa in just a moment or two. Also in today's programme, Twitter confirms in the last hour that its founder, Jack Dorsey, has stepped down as CEO with immediate effect. And violent protests in Pakistan as a man is held on suspicion of desecrating the Quran. I've been talking to the governor of Punjab. Welcome back to the programme. Uh, let's get more on that uh, breaking news. Uh, Twitter confirming that its uh, CEO, Jack Dorsey, uh, plans to stand down. And uh, we've had the ripple effects uh, in terms of shares. But uh, that story emerging in the last, what, half an hour or so with uh, more details uh, coming out. Ben Budos is here with that and the rest of the day's business. Ben, over to you. Hi, Matthew. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, yes, that's right. Jack Dorsey, the co-founder of the social media giant, is stepping down immediately as chief executive. The company's chief technology officer, Parag Agrawal, is taking over. And he does so at a time when the company is growing. A month ago, Twitter told us it now has 211 million monetizable daily active users. John Grant, senior aviation data analyst there. We'll bring you any details on uh, any more travel restrictions as we get them here on BBC World News. But for the moment, from me, that's it. Matthew, back to you. Ben, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, there's been violence in northwest Pakistan where a mob burnt a police station and multiple police posts after a man allegedly desecrated pages of the Quran. Well, that was the governor of Punjab talking to me a little earlier. Still to come here on Global will be live in South Africa for the latest on the new variant of COVID-19. Joe Biden also due to speak, so we're live too in Washington. All that here in a moment or two. Welcome back to the programme here on BBC World News. Let's return very much to our main story, the World Health Organisation advising countries to accelerate the vaccinations of high priority groups. As they say, the new Omicron variant of coronavirus is likely to pose a very high global risk. Well, we have to leave it there. Uh, Alex Segal, thanks very much for joining us uh, live there from Durban. Uh, thanks for uh, that uh, insight in terms of uh, some of the uh, current testing and science that is going on in labs right across uh, the world. But uh, do stay with us because much more on that story. We are expecting to hear from President Biden in the next little while. Uh, we're keeping an eye on those pictures. We'll go to that just as soon as it starts. Uh, but uh, we're going to take a short break. When we're back, we'll have more on that and the rest of our headline stories here on BBC World News. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelli Waller. On today's global, a perilous situation. The World Health Organization sounds the alarm over the latest variant of COVID-19. It's calling for vaccinations to be speeded up around the world to counter the Omicron variant. 
and it's predicting a new surge in infections will have severe consequences in some places. Omicron's very emergence is another reminder that although many of us might think we're done with COVID-19, it's not done with us. President Biden has been receiving a briefing on the new variant. We're expecting a statement in the next few minutes. We'll carry that live just as soon as it starts. Also on the program, Twitter confirms its founder Jack Dorsey has stepped down as CEO with immediate effect. Ghislaine Maxwell goes on trial in New York, accused of trafficking underage girls for former lover Jeffrey Epstein. I'm Michelle Flurry in New York, where a jury is set to hear opening arguments in a trial that some are describing as the one of the century. And we'll get reaction after Manchester United appoint Ralph Rangnick as their interim manager. Can he turn around United's faltering season? And welcome to today's Global. The new Omicron variant of coronavirus is highly transmissible and requires urgent action. I'm going to take you straight to the White House. Joe Biden, who's been briefed, is just coming into uh, the room, approaching the microphones. Morning, His folks. statement on the new strain. Hope. Well, as Joe Biden wraps up that news conference. Let me just take you through the key planks of what we've just heard. Uh, Joe Biden saying, when elected, I promise to be honest with you. That's how he started. He said, uh, in terms of those travel restrictions, we can slow uh, this, but we can't prevent it coming to the US. Uh, it gives us time though, but uh, sooner or later, he said, it's inevitable we'll get uh, cases of this new variant here. He said, it is a cause for concern, but not for panic and uh, underlined several times that the best protection is full vaccination, including the booster shot. He said the science shows you get some protection from the vaccine and the booster strengthens that significantly. In terms of the questioning, uh, whether there would be additional uh, curbs, uh, he didn't anticipate uh, the need for additional travel curbs. And in terms of uh, mask wearing, he was asked about uh, uh, whether the mask mandates needed to come in across the board. He said he would encourage everyone indoors to be wearing a mask. Uh, so uh, those some of the key lines there coming from President Biden. Uh, Naomi Grimley, our health correspondent, has been looking at all the latest. Well, Ali Vaz, uh, we have to leave it there, but uh, thanks very much. Uh, sorry it's so brief, but thank you. Now, Manchester United have announced the appointment of Ralph Ranjuk as the interim manager until the end of the season following the sacking of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. The 63-year-old German uh, from Lokomotiv Moscow, uh, where he was the manager of sports and development uh, at the end of the season, he'll take on a consultancy role at Old Trafford. So that amusing uh, news emerging from Old Trafford. We'll have more on that in our next edition in half an hour's time. I'm back then. Hopefully, I'll see you then. Bye-bye for now. BBC World News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. Hello, I'm Sophie Ikenye. Welcome to Focus on Africa, our top stories. The WHO warns against countries hastily imposing travel bans following the latest COVID variant first identified in South Africa. South Africa and Botswana should be thanked for detecting, sequencing and reporting this variant not penalised. The Forum on China-Africa Cooperation opens in Senegal with an announcement of a donation of 1 billion additional COVID-19 vaccine doses to Africa. Also in the program, Africa's biggest banking leak, the BBC exclusively reveals that relatives and associates of former Democratic Republic of Congo President Joseph Kabila received millions of dollars in public funds. And in sports, FIFA appoints normalization committees to run football in Guinea and Chad. We'll tell you why.
Thanks for joining us on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. Like a domino effect, one country after another has been announcing travel bans as cases of the new COVID variant, Omricon, are found within their borders. 13 countries have now reported confirmed or probable cases of the variant, but it's not yet been established how transmissible or dangerous it is. Sophie? You're up to speed with your sport. Thank you very much indeed, Peter. Thank you. And of course, uh, don't forget, you can get in touch with me and some of the team on social media um, at CK. That's Focus on Africa for now. Thank you so much for your company. Bye. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrady Waller. On today's global, a perilous situation. The World Health Organization sounds the alarm over the latest variant of COVID-19. It's calling for vaccinations to be speeded up around the world to counter the Omicron variant. And it's predicting a new surge in infections will have severe consequences in some places. President Biden tells Americans not to panic, but admits the new variant will arrive sooner or later in the US. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. We have the best vaccine in the world, <clears throat> the best medicines, the best scientists, and we're learning more every single day. Also on today's program, Twitter confirms its founder, Jack Dorsey, has stepped down as CEO with immediate effect. Socialite Ghislaine Maxwell goes on trial in New York, accused of trafficking underage girls for her former lover, Jeffrey Epstein. And Manchester United appoint Ralph Ranić as their interim manager. We'll speak to someone who knows him well. Hello and welcome to the program. The new Omicron variant of coronavirus is highly transmissible and requires urgent action. That's the warning from the World Health Organization and now the G7 health ministers who've held an emergency meeting today to discuss the new strain of the virus. Several countries have now reported cases of the variant, but it's not yet been established how dangerous it is or how effectively the current vaccines will protect against it. Michelle Fleury there outside of the courthouse. Now, do stay with us because still to come on today's global, Barbados becomes a republic, cutting its ties with the British monarchy after 400 years. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main headlines here. President Biden tells Americans that the new Omicron variant is a cause for concern, but not for panic. And Twitter has confirmed its founder, Jack Dorsey, has stepped down as CEO with immediate effect. Now, the heir to the British throne, Prince Charles, has arrived in Barbados to mark the moment it severs its ties with Queen Elizabeth. The Caribbean island has had the monarchy as head of state for nearly 400 years. On Tuesday, it will become a republic, but will remain in the Commonwealth. Well, that's Spanish deal. It'll be interesting because if it goes well in those six months, perhaps the clamour will be that he gets the job uh, full time. A pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on today's global programme. That's just about it uh, from me. Uh, thanks to you for watching and hopefully I'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Bye. Hello there. Most of Europe has cold weather at the moment.
This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global Confirmation, the new variant of COVID has been in Europe longer than we thought and before South Africa first reported it. 42 cases have now been identified in the EU in 10 different countries. Symptoms, though, are mild. Three major vaccine makers have now said they're looking to tweak their jabs to tackle the new strain if needed. Well, the head of South Africa's Institute for Communicable Diseases joins us on the programme. Also in today's Global, the British Prime Minister will give his response in the next few minutes. The UK has already made masks mandatory on transport and in shops from today. Could this be a turning point in the war in Yemen as Houthi rebels gain ground? We report from the makeshift camps for displaced people. People here are suffering because of the fault lines that run right through the Middle East. In a rare interview with the BBC, the head of Britain's MI6 warns about China's debt traps and data traps. Our security correspondent Frank Gardner is here to explain more. And one of France's great national heroes, the singer and activist Josephine Baker, is honoured in Paris. Hello and welcome to today's Global. We start with the latest on the Omicron variant of coronavirus and confirmation that it's been present in Europe earlier than previously thought and before the variant was first reported in South Africa. That came from health officials in the Netherlands. Professor, we have to leave it there, but thanks so much for joining us and thanks for your patience uh, uh, to just wait uh, for the end of uh, what we took from Boris Johnson. Thanks so much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you. Just to tell you, in about 20 minutes, we'll be answering uh, uh, more of your questions that have come in uh, uh, with uh, so many issues uh, in terms of this new variant. So uh, a lot of your questions, we have experts uh, that have sifted through that. So we'll play that to you in about 20 minutes time here on the programme. Now, the chief of MI6, Britain's secret intelligence service, is warning about China's debt traps and data traps in his first live broadcast interview. Richard Moore, known as C, said they threatened to erode sovereignty and have prompted defensive measures. Fascinating stuff. Frank, mm. thanks very much. Thank you. Mm. Now, do stay with us, because still to come here on our programme, we have a special report from war-torn Yemen, where at least 800,000 people are now living in refugee camps. That report from Jerry Moan, here in a moment or two. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Now, the war in Yemen could be at a turning point. Houthi forces have been pushing at the city of Marab for two years, but since September, they've gone on the offensive and gained ground at the expense of the army of the internationally recognised government. When we're back, we'll have more on that new variant of COVID-19. Your questions being answered. That's here in just a moment or two. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrady Waller. On today's Global Confirmation, the new variant of COVID has been in Europe longer than we thought and before South Africa first reported it. 42 cases have now been identified in the EU in 10 different countries. Symptoms, though, are mild. Three major vaccine makers have now said they're looking to tweak their jabs to tackle the new strain if needed. We'll be trying to answer your questions about the variant and the new travel restrictions many countries have now implemented. And in business, doubts about vaccine efficacy against Omicron have sent a shudder through the markets. More on that in about 15 minutes' time.
Welcome back to Global. Now, it's been revealed that the Omicron variant of coronavirus was present in Europe earlier than previously thought and before the variant was first reported in South Africa. That came from health officials in the Netherlands. Meanwhile, the head of the EU's public health agency said 42 cases have been found in 10 European countries. Officials in Greece say people over 60 years old who don't get vaccinated against coronavirus will face monthly fines. Well, there are plenty of questions coming in to the BBC about this new variant. Here's my colleague Lucy Hawkins with your questions answered. As countries around the world are stepping up testing and rolling out fresh restrictions to limit the spread of the new Omicron COVID variant, many of you have been sending us your questions. Well, to help us talk this through, I'm joined by Professor David Montefiore, immunologist at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina, and Julia Lobo Said, CEO of the Advantage Travel Partnership Group. She joins us from Hertfordshire in England. It's lovely to see you both, and thank you for taking the time to answer some of our questions. As I was sifting through them, you could really get a sense of the concern people, many people have about the variant and in some cases there's a bit of a sense of panic too. It's been so valuable to have your insights both of you. Thank you very much. Many thanks to Professor David Montefiore, immunologist at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina and Julia Labousaid, CEO of the Advantage Travel Partnership Group who joined us from here in England. You've been watching Your Questions Answered. Really interesting stuff there. Now, stay with us because still to come here on Global, the head of the US Central Bank tells Congress that the new variant threatens the recovery. More on that in our business news. back to Global here on BBC World News. Uh, let us catch up with the business news of the day. Ben is here and the global markets have been reacting to this new variant and the chair of the Fed also pitching in. Yeah, a lot happening on that front, Matthew. Thank you very much. Yeah, the latest COVID variant, Omicron, is causing havoc, actually, in global markets. Shares in markets in France, Germany and the UK have all fallen sharply. Uh, and in the US, on US markets, they have also been trading uh, lower in the session. Those are the uh, falls on the European markets. They had bounced back on the previous day, but they are now uh, seeing further losses. And that's the picture on Wall Street. As you can see, down, each of the main markets down more than 1%. Now, this is all after the boss of the COVID vaccine maker, Moderna, predicted that existing vaccines will be less effective against the new Omicron variant. That's it from me for the moment. Matthew, back to you. And thanks very much. Uh, one more story to uh, squeeze in because France is honouring the singer Josephine Baker with a place in the Pantheon. So we'll bring you more on that story here in our next edition. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amreli Waller. On today's Global, confirmation the new variant of COVID has been in Europe longer than we thought and before South Africa first reported it. 42 cases have now been identified in the EU in 10 different countries. Symptoms, though, are mild. Three major vaccine makers have now said they're looking to tweak their jabs to tackle the new strain if needed. Britain sets a two-month target to give booster jabs to all adults over 18. It's time for another great British vaccination effort. We've done it before and we're going to do it again. And let's not give this virus a second chance. We'll get all the latest from our health correspondent, Laura Foster, who's here with me later in the programme. In a rare interview with the BBC, the head of Britain's MI6 warns about China's debt traps and data traps.
And one of France's great national heroes, the singer and activist Josephine Baker, is honoured in Paris. Well, this is the scene live currently in Paris. We'll have more on all of that here on the programme in the next few minutes. Hello and welcome back to today's Global. Let's uh, start again with the latest on the Omicron variant of coronavirus and confirmation that it's been present in Europe earlier than previously thought and before the variant was first reported in South Africa. That came from health officials in the Netherlands. Laura Foster, thanks for taking us through all of that. Thank you. Now to another of our headline stories, the chief of MI6, Britain's secret intelligence service, is warning about China's debt traps and data traps in his first live broadcast interview. Richard Moore, known as C, said they threatened to erode sovereignty and have prompted defensive measures. Well, that was Poland's prime minister there speaking to our Europe editor, Katia Adler. Well, do stay with us because uh, here on our programme in the next few minutes, the opening matches of football's Arab Cup are being played in Qatar ahead of next year's World Cup. That story is coming up next. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main headlines here. Health authorities in the Netherlands have confirmed that they detected two cases of the new Omicron variant the week before it was identified in South Africa. And three major vaccine makers have now said they're looking to tweak their jabs to tackle the new strain if needed. Now, the opening matches of football's Arab Cup are being played on Tuesday in one of the stadiums in Qatar that have been built for the 2022 World Cup. Tunisia won the opening match, while Qatar are playing now against Bahrain. Now, let's turn to some of the other stories making the headlines here today. One in three people say they've been subjected to some sort of sexual harassment or abuse while working at the Australian Federal Parliament, according to a review by the country's Sex Discrimination Commission. The report to commission following rape allegations by a former Liberal Party worker found widespread instances of bullying, sexual harassment or actual or attempted sexual assault. The Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, said the findings were appalling and disturbing. A German court has sentenced an Iraqi man to life in jail for genocide against Yazidi people. 29-year-old Taha al-Jumaili joined the Islamic State group and kept a Yazidi woman and her daughter as slaves in Iraq. The girl died after he chained her outside in temperatures of up to 50 degrees Celsius. And Barbados has officially removed Queen Elizabeth as its head of state and become the world's newest republic. In an overnight ceremony in the capital, Dame Sandra Mason was sworn in as president. In a speech, Prince Charles acknowledged the appalling atrocity of slavery that the Caribbean island had suffered. Now, as we've been seeing, France is honouring the singer and the activist Josephine Baker with a place in the Pantheon. Latest from Kabul. Just time to return to that breaking news from Washington News from the U.S. House of Representatives Committee investigating the deadly January the 6th riots, uh, saying that Mark Meadows, uh, Donald Trump's former chief of staff, has provided records to the panel and agreed to appear soon for the initial deposition. Uh, the chairman of the committee saying the committee will continue to assess his degree of compliance with our subpoena after that deposition. Here in uh, 30 minutes we'll talk to Anthony Zerka on that latest important development. Uh, now though, we're going to take a break. Next up, it's time to Focus on Africa. Bye for now. BBC World News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. 
Hello, I'm Sophie Ikenya. Welcome to Focus on Africa, our top stories. The Netherlands has said it had detected the presence of two Omicron cases in the country before they were reported in South Africa. Barbados becomes the world's newest republic after officially removing Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state. Also in the program, Voice of Hope. That's the courage of a famous Senegalese singer whose career came to a halt when he suddenly lost his voice. And in sport, Mohamed Salah may not have won the Ballon d'Or, but he did scoop the Golden Foot Award in Monaco. Thanks for joining us on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. The new COVID-19 variant, Omicron, was present in the Netherlands earlier than previously thought. Officials say it was identified in two test samples taken in the country between 19th and the 23rd of November, which is before the variant was first reported by South Africa. And that's all the sports. Sophie, back to you. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you for that. Let's... Uh, just quickly remind you of our top story here on Focus in Africa. The new COVID-19 variant, uh, Omicron, was detected in the Netherlands before flights from South Africa landed in the country. Now, the variant was identified in two test samples that were taken in the country between the 19th and the 23rd of November. And that's before the variant was first reported in South Africa. Now, this information comes after a number of nations imposed travel bans across southern Africa. UN South Africa representative says travel ban is unfair and stresses importance of vaccine equity. There are more than 30 mutations in the spike of this new variant, which is part of the virus that vaccines train the body to recognize and attack. And that's a focus on Africa for now. Feel free to get in touch with me and some of the team on social media. I'm Atsi Thank you for your company. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelly Waller. On today's global confirmation, the new variant of COVID has been in Europe longer than we thought and before South Africa first reported it. In the last few minutes, it's been confirmed there are now more than 220 cases in 20 countries around the world. Symptoms, though, are mild. Three major vaccine makers have now said they're looking to tweak their jabs to tackle the new strain if needed. And Britain sets a two-month target to give booster jabs to all adults over 18. It's time for another great British vaccination effort. We've done it before and we're going to do it again. And let's not give this virus a second chance. We'll have uh, the latest on that, our main story, also in the programme. Breaking news from Washington, where the committee investigating the January the 6th attack on the Capitol says Donald Trump's former chief of staff has agreed to give evidence to them. We're live in Washington. And a moving ceremony on the streets of Paris. France bestows its highest honour to the singer and activist Josephine Baker for her wartime resistance work. Hello and welcome back to Global. We start with the latest on the Omicron variant of coronavirus and confirmation that has been present in Europe earlier than previously thought and before the variant was first reported in South Africa. 
And in the last few minutes, the US Chief Medical Advisor Anthony Fauci has just said there are 226 confirmed cases of Omicron in 20 countries, but none yet in the US. The boss of MI6 now still to come here on today's programme. France honours the singer Josephine Baker, heroine of the wartime resistance movement with a special ceremony right in the centre of Paris. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main headlines here. In the last few minutes, it's been confirmed there are now more than 220 cases of the new Omicron variant around the world. There are none so far in the US, according to its infectious diseases expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Three major vaccine makers have now said they're looking to tweak their jabs to tackle the new strain if needed. Now, a German court has sentenced an Iraqi man to life in jail for genocide against the Yazidi people. Well, some wonderful images coming into us from Paris as they honour uh, that uh, event. Now, just to return to our main story, uh, of course, uh, Anthony Fauci in the last few minutes saying that 226 cases of the new variant have been discovered in 20 countries around the world as countries bring in new restrictions. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hello there. An intense storm system, an area of low pressure that brought damaging winds. I think in specific... Well, an important question, news conference there. We're there going to come away for the next uh, few minutes. Uh, some new lines, though, coming from the World Health Organization. They say they expect to have more information on the transmission of the new variant within days. Uh, that is faster than the weeks they talked about last week. And also uh, the World Health Organization warning of a toxic mix uh, of low vaccination coverage and testing rates, creating a further to our breeding ground uh, for new COVID variants. Uh, so a couple of the key lines, countries. we'll have more on that here in a moment uh, or two. Don't go away. Effects hopefully in uh, ensuring solidarity. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelli Waller. On today's Global, the World Health Organization warns of a toxic mix of low vaccine coverage and low testing, creating a fertile breeding ground for new COVID variants. New travel guidance has come in in Europe, the US, Japan and parts of Africa because of the new variant. The EU chief, Ursula von der Leyen, says it's time for member states to consider mandatory vaccinations. So we are in kind of a tug of war. On the one hand, you have the virus and the variants. And on the other hand, we have vaccination and boosters. And I want the second part to win. We'll speak live to the director of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Later in the programme, a defining moment for abortion rights in the United States as the Supreme Court prepares to hear the most important case in a generation. I'm Barbara Platt Usher in Washington DC where the Supreme Court is hearing the most significant challenge to abortion rights in a generation. And the US warns Russia over the buildup of troops on Ukraine's border, a warning echoed by NATO. NATO allies have demonstrated that we uh, actually can impose heavy costs on Russia when they violate international law and invade another country.
Hello and welcome to today's Global. In the last few minutes, the World Health Organization has warned of a toxic mix of low vaccination coverage and low testing rates. They say it creates a fertile breeding ground for new COVID variants. With the new high transmissible Omicron variant causing concern around the world, the WHO has been holding a media conference in the last. Doctor, we have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us live there from Stockholm. My pleasure. Now, a woman's right to abortion in the U.S. is about to face its toughest challenge in a generation. The Supreme Court is considering the question of whether all bans on abortion before the fetus is viable are unconstitutional. It could roll back 50 years of reproductive rights and have big implications on other sectors of American society. Barbara, there in Washington, live for us. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now let's take a look at the day's other main global stories. And India's capital, Delhi, has recorded its worst November air in at least six years, according to official data. The city recorded 11 days of severe pollution, up from 10 days in November 2016. Data also showed that the residents of Delhi didn't experience even one good day of air quality throughout the month. The European Union says its new global investment plan will be a true alternative to China's Belt and Road Initiative. The European Commission has outlined plans to raise 300 billion euros up to 2027 via its global gateway strategy. Beijing's initiative has invested billions of dollars in dozens of countries over the last eight years. The EU said it would offer a different model. We'll have more on that in our business news in 20 minutes. Russia says U.S. diplomats who've served at their embassy in Moscow for more than three years will have to leave by the end of January. Russian officials say the move is in retaliation for last week's U.S. order to expel 27 Russian diplomats. There have been multiple tit-for-tat expulsions between the two countries in recent years. Now, do stay with us because still to come. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main headlines, governments around the world are ramping up coronavirus prevention measures to control the Omicron variant. The World Health Organization has just warned of a toxic mix of low vaccination coverage and low testing rates. The EU chief, first of all, says it's time for member states to consider mandatory vaccinations. Now, Ukraine's foreign minister says uh, Russian troop movements indicate a possible new military move against his country. Tension has escalated in recent months with the build-up of Russian forces at the border. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says he plans to tell his Russian counterpart tomorrow that Moscow needs to pull back and remove its forces. Laura Podesta and of course we'll have more of those lines of evidence throughout the course of our programme. Lots of uh, heavy lifting on the programme uh, so far today but uh, let's uh, close this half hour by putting a smile on your face with uh, these pictures because a zoo in western France has welcomed a newborn pygmy hippo this month. Look at that. Well the calf is the mother's third offspring and zookeepers say she's been very protective and not let it out of her sights. The pygmy hippo is an endangered species under threat from deforestation. Unlike the larger common hippo, pygmy hippos apparently usually live alone except when they're mating or with their calf. They're mainly nocturnal, spending the day in water and then moving to land to actually feed. Lovely pictures, I'm back with more on all of our headline stories here in just a moment or two. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrily Waller. On today's Global, the World Health Organization warns of a toxic mix of low vaccine coverage and low testing, creating a fertile breeding ground for new COVID variants. New travel guidance has come in in Europe, the US, Japan and parts of Africa because of the Omicron variant. The EU chief Ursula von der Leyen says it's time for member states to consider mandatory vaccinations. Also on Global, a defining moment for abortion rights in the United States as the Supreme Court hears the most important case in a generation. 
And later in the program, American military power on show to China. We have the view on board the USS Carl Vinson at the end of the biggest annual naval exercise between America and its allies in Asia. So by my estimation, we're now somewhere about 500 kilometers off the coast of Japan, somewhere near the island of Iwo Jima. Hello and welcome back to today's Global. The U.S. Supreme Court is hearing arguments on a Mississippi law banning abortion after 15 weeks. A ruling is not expected until July, but if the conservative-leading Supreme Court finds in Mississippi's favour, it would undermine the constitutional right to an abortion established back in 1973 in a case known as Roe v. Wade. Professor, we have to leave it there, but thanks so much for joining us uh, on this day one. Perhaps we'll speak again in the coming months. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Now, let us pause. It is business time. Ben is here and looking at uh, more concerns about the strength of the global economic recovery. Ben, over to you. Matthew, thank you very much. Yes, the global economic recovery is showing increasing signs of inequality between richer and poorer countries because of differing levels of access to vaccines. The latest forecasts from the OECD have trimmed the global growth forecast for this year to 5.6%. OK, thanks for talking us through that, Jessica. Jessica Parker there for us in Brussels. And that's it from me for the moment, Matthew. Back to you. Ben, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, do stay with us because still to come on our program here, we're on board one of America's aircraft carriers as it joins up with allies in Asia with political focus around China's intentions towards Taiwan. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Let's turn to our main headlines. Governments around the world are ramping up their coronavirus prevention measures to control the Omicron variant. The World Health Organization has said this hour a warning that there is a toxic mix of low vaccination coverage and low testing rates. The EU's chief Ursula von der Leyen says it's time for member states to consider mandatory vaccinations. Now, for months, China has been probing Taiwan's airspace, leading to speculation it could be preparing to attack or even invade the island. Before we break, let's return to that World Health Organization press conference. An interesting line coming from Mike Ryan, who says he's not aware of any evidence that giving whole populations COVID-19 boosters will provide greater protection. That's interesting in terms of his analysis after what we heard from the UK, which was that all adults would get the booster vaccine by January. We'll have much more on that breaking story and all those new developments here in our next edition. And that's in a moment or two. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amredi Waller. On today's Global, a fresh warning from the World Health Organization as it urges the world to act against coronavirus transmission. The Director General says inaction over the fair distribution of vaccines and testing is playing into the hands of the virus. We have a toxic mix of low vaccine coverage and very low testing a recipe for breeding and amplifying variants. New travel guidance in Europe, the US, Japan and parts of Africa has been brought in because of the Omicron variant. We'll hear from the director of the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. Later in the program, the US warns Russia over the buildup of troops on Ukraine's border, a warning echoed by NATO. NATO allies have demonstrated that we uh, actually can impose heavy costs on Russia when they violate international law and invade another country. 
And a defining moment for abortion rights in the United States as the Supreme Court hears the most important case in a generation. And welcome back to today's Global. The World Health Organization has warned of a toxic mix of low vaccination coverage and low testing rates. They say it creates a fertile breeding ground for new COVID variants. With the new highly transmissible Omicron variant causing concern around the world, the WHO has been holding a news conference. Barbara Plett Usher there at the Supreme Court. Now let's take a look at uh, some stories also making the headlines today. India's capital, Delhi, has recorded its worst November air in at least six years according to official data. The city recorded 11 days of severe pollution up from 10 days in November 2016. Data also showed that residents of Delhi didn't experience even one good day of air quality throughout the month. The European Union says its new global investment plan will be a true alternative to China's Belt and Road Initiative. The European Commission has outlined plans to raise 300 billion euros up to 2027 via its global gateway strategy. Beijing's initiative has invested billions of dollars in dozens of countries over the last eight years. The EU said it would be a different model. Russia says U.S. diplomats who served at their embassy in Moscow for more than three years will have to leave by the end of January. Russian officials say the move is in retaliation for last week's U.S. order to expel 27 Russian diplomats. There have been multiple tit-for-tat expulsions between the two countries over recent years. Now, the trial of Ghislaine Maxwell has heard from a woman who says she was groomed for abuse from the age of 14. The woman, who's now in her 40s, says she was first approached by the British socialite and the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein at a summer camp. Laura Podesta. Now, do stay with us, because still to come on Global, Russia's build-up of troops on Ukraine's border has provoked a strong response from the US and NATO. We'll hear from NATO Secretary General here on the programme in a moment or two. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main headlines here. The head of the World Health Organization has warned of a toxic mix of low vaccination coverage and low testing rates across the globe, which is breeding and amplifying new COVID variants. Meanwhile, governments around the world are ramping up coronavirus prevention measures to control the Omicron, uh, Omicron variant. Now, Ukraine's foreign minister says Russian troop movements indicate a possible new military move against his country. Tension has escalated in recent months with the build-up of Russian forces at the border. Now, that's just about it for me. I'm back in half an hour with more on all of our top stories. That's after Focus on Africa. See you in a bit. BBC World News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. Hello, I'm Peter Okwacha. Welcome to Focus on Africa, our top stories. France says it will partially lift its travel ban on Southern Africa at the weekend, the first country to do so since the Omicron variant was first identified in South Africa. The BBC speaks to a Somali man, one of just two people who survived the migrant boat sinking in the English Channel last week, which left 27 people dead. As the Gambia prepares to choose its president this weekend, we speak to the main opposition candidate Usaini Dabo on his fourth election attempt. Also on the programme, South Africa's battle against gender-based violence will report from one of the country's most dangerous places for women and children. In the first 10 months of this year alone, more than 30,000 rape cases were reported. But many cases here go unreported. 
and in sports. The World Athlete of the Year awards are taking place virtually with quite a few African stars in the running. It's not quite the reversal hoped for, but today France said it would allow in flights from 10 southern African countries from Saturday, partially lifting its travel ban imposed after the discovery of the new coronavirus variant Omicron in South Africa. It's the first country to ease restrictions, but France will only permit French and EU residents to disembark. And of course, all the travel bans imposed by countries both outside and within the continent remain for now. That's all the sport, Peter. Many thanks, Mimi. Always grateful and good to have you in the studio. That's it on Focus on Africa for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow. Bye. -bye. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, a fresh warning from the World Health Organization as it urges the world to act against coronavirus transmission. The Director General says inaction over the fair distribution of vaccines and testing is playing into the hands of the virus. We have a toxic mix of low vaccine coverage and very low testing. A recipe for breeding and amplifying variants. New travel guidance is brought in in Europe, the US, Japan and parts of Africa because of the Omicron variant. We'll hear from the director of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Also coming up in the programme, the US warns Russia over the build-up of troops on Ukraine's border, a warning echoed by NATO. NATO allies have demonstrated that we uh, actually can impose heavy costs on Russia when they violate international law and invade another country. And a defining moment for abortion rights in the United States as the Supreme Court hears the most important case in a generation. Welcome back to Global. The World Health Organization has warned of a toxic mix of low vaccination coverage and low testing rates. They say it creates a fertile breeding ground for new COVID variants. With the new highly transmissible Omicron variant causing concern around the world, the WHO has been holding a news conference. Its director general said if countries don't stop the transmission of the Delta variant, well, that was Professor Joe Hasday talking to me a little earlier on the programme. Now, do stay with us because still to come on Global, we're on board one of America's aircraft carriers as it joins up with allies in Asia with tension around China's intentions towards Taiwan. back to the program here on BBC World News. Let's turn to our main headlines because the head of the World Health Organization has warned of a toxic mix of low vaccination coverage and low testing rates across the globe, which is breeding and amplifying new COVID variants. Meanwhile, governments around the world are ramping up coronavirus prevention measures to control the Om Omicron variant. Well, in the last few minutes, President Biden has been giving an update on that new variant, once again encouraging Americans to get booster shots. Just have a listen. Here he is at the White House. Great stuff. Just time to tell you the UN Secretary General has said travel bans over the new COVID strain are unfair and ineffective. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. Hello again. A deep area of low pressure bringing some disruptive weather to northwest Europe.
This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelly Waller. On today's global growing international concern about the spread of the new COVID variant as it becomes the dominant strain in South Africa. There were 8,500 daily infections on Wednesday. The vast majority are Omicron, a sharp increase from only 300 a week ago. Germany considers an act of national solidarity to reduce the infection rate. The unvaccinated could be barred from culture and leisure nationwide. We'll be live in Johannesburg to get the latest on the ground. We'll also talk to an expert analysing the data that's emerging. Also on the programme. The Women's Tennis Association suspends all events in China amid concerns sexual assault allegations made by the tennis star Peng Shui have not been investigated. We'll speak to Pam Shriver. And Afghanistan's former president speaks to the BBC. Hamid Karzai calls for international help to avoid a humanitarian crisis. They better come and help the Afghan people. They and their allies and the international community must help Afghanistan rebuild itself. Hello and welcome to today's Global. There's growing international concern about the spread of the Omicron variant of coronavirus, with health officials in South Africa saying the new COVID variant has become the dominant strain and is driving a sharp rise in infections in the country. Well, that was Steve Rosenberg in Moscow. We'll get more on that story out of Washington a little later here on today's Global. But do stay with us because uh, coming up next, the BBC talks to the former Afghan president, Hamid Karzai. He says the world needs to engage with the Taliban to help the people in his country. That interview is next. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Let's turn to our main headlines. There's growing international concern about the spread of the new COVID variant as it becomes the dominant strain in South Africa following a sharp rise in cases there. The Women's Tennis Association suspends all events in China amid concerns sexual assault allegations made by the tennis star Peng Shui have not been investigated. Now, Afghanistan's former president, Hamid Karzai, has called on the international community to continue to engage with the new Taliban government, saying his country risks becoming the world's worst humanitarian crisis. In a rare broadcast interview since the Taliban swept to power three months ago, he also criticised the United States, saying their bombs were no longer needed in his country. He's been speaking to the BBC's Yada Hagi. Well, Yada is with me, as you can see, and a fascinating interview that Yada and such a journey for Hamid Karzai himself because a friend of America, now pretty much a constant critic, uh, part of the fight against the Taliban, now describing them as brave and as brothers. Get the aid to us somehow because we have this harsh winter looming. Well, Yada, thanks very much for taking us through that uh, and, of course, that uh, interview with uh, Hamid Karzai. Now, uh, do stay with us because uh, still to come on the programme, the Hollywood star Alec Baldwin insists he did not pull the trigger in that fatal shooting of the cinematographer Helena Hutchins. More on that story coming up in our programme in a moment or two. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrady Waller on today's global growing international concern about the spread of the new COVID variant as it becomes the dominant strain in South Africa. There were 8,500 COVID infections on Wednesday, the vast majority the Omicron variant. Last week, there were only 300. The new variant has also spread into India, two people infected in the south of the country hear from our correspondent in Mumbai on that part of the story. Also in the programme, falling oil prices, so why has OPEC just announced an increase in production? And the Duchess of Sussex wins her privacy battle against the publishers of the Mail on Sunday.
Welcome back to the programme. Germany has announced sweeping new restrictions for people who've not been vaccinated against COVID-19. Angela Merkel said the number of infections was depressingly high. She said the unvaccinated would be barred from many public places, including non-essential shops. Now, do stay with us because still to come here on our programme, the Hollywood star Alec Baldwin insists he did not pull the trigger in the fatal shooting of the cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main story here, growing international concern about the spread of the new COVID variant as it becomes the dominant strain in South Africa following a sharp rise in cases. Now, scientists believe they've found what leads to the extremely rare blood clots in a small number of people who've had the AstraZeneca COVID jab. Great stuff. Uh, now, do stay with us because in our next edition, we'll be live in Johannesburg, uh, the latest on the ground in South Africa on that uh, new variant and the spike in cases they are seeing. We'll also be live in Washington, the latest tensions between America and Russia, this time over Ukraine. So all of that coming up here on Global in a moment or two. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emerly Waller. On today's global, growing international concern about the spread of the new COVID variant as it becomes the dominant strain in South Africa. There were eight and a half thousand daily infections on Wednesday. The vast majority are Omicron, a sharp increase from only 300 a week ago. Germany considers an act of national solidarity to reduce the infection rate. The unvaccinated could be banned from culture and leisure events nationwide. We're live in Johannesburg to get the latest on the ground. Also on the programme. Heading for a new nightmare of military confrontation, Russia's Sergei Lavrov warns the US over plans to place intermediate range nuclear missiles in Europe. And the Women's Tennis Association suspends all events in China amid concerns sexual assault allegations made by the player Peng Shui have not been investigated. We'll hear from the former tennis great Pam Shriver. Welcome back to the programme. There is growing international concern about the spread of the Omicron variant of coronavirus, with health officials in South Africa saying the new COVID variant has become the dominant strain and is driving a sharp rise in infections in the country. Barbara, thanks very much. Barbara Pledusher there in Washington. Now, do stay with us because still to come here on the programme, Venezuela's collapsing health system. We have a special report from one state where health workers are struggling with the impact of COVID-19. back to the program here on BBC World News. Our main story, there's growing international concern about the spread of the new COVID variant as it becomes the dominant strain in South Africa following a sharp rise in cases. Uh, let's stay with that story because the latest figures just coming in from South Africa recording 11,535 new infections in the last 24 hours. That's up from 8,500 cases yesterday with 44 people dying today. So uh, not as big a jump as the day before, but still significant figures there from South Africa. Now, China has accused the Women's Tennis Association of politicising sport after it suspended all tournaments in the country over concerns about the treatment of the Chinese star Peng Shui. The 35-year-old disappeared last month after accusing a former senior government official of sexual assault. 
Now, one more story to bring you. Archaeologists have uncovered an altar in Mexico City that dates back to the 16th century. It's been found in a courtyard inside the home of an Aztec family. It was used to honour their dead. An urn containing human ashes was one of the items found. The altar can be traced back to the period before the Spanish conquest of the Aztec capital. Now, I'm back in uh, half an hour's time with more on all of our main stories, and that's after Focus on Africa. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. BBC World News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. Hello, I'm Peter Okwacha. Welcome to Focus on Africa, our top stories. South African health officials say the new coronavirus variant Omicron could be driving sharp increases in infections which have doubled in just a few days. As Ugandan forces embark on a ground offensive against the rebel ADF group in neighboring DR Congo, we ask, what is their end game? It's the last day of campaigning as the Gambia prepares to head to the polls on Saturday. Also on the program, technology to the rescue. Two women in Kinshasa develop an app to respond to kidnappings in taxis. One of my cousins get kidnapped in the taxi, but I was like, okay, I have a mission. How can we find a solution and, and uh, bring safe, sustainable, affordable mobility to the population? And in sport, we'll hear from Nigeria's Chinedu Obasi, who played under Manchester United's new interim manager, Ralph Ragnick. Thanks for joining us here on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. South Africa's National Institute for Communicable Diseases says the country is entering its fourth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is after the number of new daily infections more than doubled in the last 24 hours. And experts believe over 70% of all new cases in the last month are of the new Omicron variant. And that's all the sport for now. Peter. Many thanks, Mimi. And I like the way Mimi started that story about Arsenal. If Arsenal win tonight, they move back into the top four. Come on. <laughs> That's it on Focus on Africa for today. Thanks for watching. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrily Waller. On today's global growing international concern about the spread of the new COVID variant as it becomes the dominant strain in South Africa. There were 11,500 daily infections on Thursday. The vast majority are Omicron, a sharp increase from 300 a week ago. Germany considers an act of national solidarity to reduce the infection rate there. The unvaccinated could be banned from culture and leisure events nationwide. Heading for a new nightmare of military confrontation, Russia's Sergei Lavrov warns the US over plans to place intermediate range nuclear missiles in Europe. The Women's Tennis Association suspends all events in China amid concerns sexual assault allegations made by the player Peng Shui have not been investigated. We'll hear from the former tennis great, Pam Shriver. In the years since the Summer Olympic Games first were played there in, uh, in 2008, that things in China on the human rights side have not gotten better.
Hello and welcome to Global. There's growing international concern about the spread of the Omicron variant of coronavirus, with health officials in South Africa saying the new COVID variant has become the dominant strain and is driving a sharp rise in infections in the country. Papa Pet Usher. Now, still to come on today's programme, the Duchess of Sussex wins her privacy battle against the publishers of the Mail on Sunday. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. China has accused the Women's Tennis Association of politicising sport after it suspended all tournaments in the country over concerns about the treatment of the Chinese tennis player Peng Shui. The 35-year-old disappeared last month after accusing a former senior government official of sexual assault. Well, that's nearly it. Uh, just time to take you back to Germany and show you the pictures there because that uh, farewell ceremony to Angela Merkel has started there. You see the German Chancellor making the speech after so long at the helm of Germany. This farewell ceremony just getting underway. Uh, it will be uh, carefully choreographed, an evening of music, uh, a lot of traditional military music, but a few eyebrows raising as she is uh, picked out. A communist era hit by the godmother of punk. Nina Hagen. So plenty more pictures from Berlin here on BBC World News a little later in the evening. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Hello, very active weather pattern in Europe at the moment. 